Democrats are amping up the pressure on Secretary of State Mike Pompeo over his recommendation to fire a State Department inspector general who was investigating him. After demanding that Steve Linick be reinstated, the Democrats called his ouster just the latest in a, quote, series of politically motivated firings, and they've proposed a new bill to protect inspectors general from retaliation. They're also looking at whether Pompeo used taxpayer resources for personal purposes, focusing in part on a series of private events. NBC News is reporting that Pompeo was regularly holding elaborate things called Madison dinners on the government's dime up until coronavirus became widespread. The gatherings reportedly included an elite guest list of political heavyweights, of ambassadors, billionaire CEOs, all of them in entertained, at least in one instance, by a harpist. Joining me to discuss, Joel Rubin, former Obama administration, deputy assistant secretary of state for legislative affairs, and Sanders campaign Jewish outreach director. Joel, uh, I hope you're doing okay. I want to start with these dinners, which were never Thanks, on Pompeo's public schedule, although his spokeswoman said they provided an opportunity to discuss the mission of the State Department. Democrats, conversely, argue this is pure politics. It's a way for Pompeo to build a network of support for a possible future Senate or even presidential run. Was there ever anything like these dinners when you were at State? Yeah, Chris, uh, it's great to be with you, and I hope you're doing well as, as well. Um, there was nothing like this at the State Department for the Obama administration. This is a a taxpayer-funded slush fund for Mike Pompeo's political future. There's no other way to look at this. The names that they pulled together, the lists, were all organized and orchestrated by his wife on a Gmail account, which uh, rings bells, of course, of all of the, the anger that used to come out of Mike Pompeo about how Hillary Clinton in, uh, engaged at the State Department about private email. Now they're having off-the-books emails, gathering names, using taxpayer money to bring in uh, notables with no foreign policy uh, a connection. It's important to understand that at high level dinners where uh, the Secretary of State will bring in people, typically when it's foreign policy related, a desk officer, an official who handles that portfolio will engage the Secretary and there will be follow up after. None of that happened in this case. And these have been going on for nearly a month, for two years. No foreign policy content. So clearly they're for a different mission. And we learned about these dinners, Joel, as the Dems were also looking into the firing of A.G. Steve Linick, who had been uh, I.G. Steve Linick, who had been investigating whether yeah. Mr. Pompeo and his wife, Susan, inappropriately used uh, that taxpayer paid government employee to run personal errands, whether Pompeo broke the law by circumventing Congress on selling arms to Saudi Arabia and UAE. Look, I know you wrote a piece about this for The Daily Beast on Pompeo. What's the core issue here as you see it? It, the core issue is transparency. Uh, the core issue really is about ensuring that the American people, that we know what our government is doing. And that's why we have inspectors general. They're independent. They don't report to the secretary in the, an actual substantive way. They're supposed to be inspecting the work of the State Department, in this case, and other agencies. And, and this administration hates transparency. Uh, let's make no bones about it. They've fired now up, up to four inspectors general and their deputies in recent weeks to get away from having anybody understand what they're doing. And they've already pushed away Congress. So uh, speaking to the Saudi arms uh, sale, that was opposed by Congress. They, they blew off Congress. Pompeo uh, didn't uh, listen to what Congress wanted. And then the inspector general was asked to study it, and he was fired. He was hot on the trail of something. So clearly, they don't want transparency, and they don't want us to know what they're doing with taxpayer money. Yeah, and there's a history, right? The history is very simple, straightforward. 1978 Watergate, inspectors general were put in, and they've done things like uh, rooting out billions of dollars being misspent of taxpayer dollars in Afghanistan. Um, it was inspectors general who uncovered torture. You know, look, there are also yeah. a lot of less well-known things, but what do you see happening as a result of this? And what's the message to, I think, something like 74 other inspectors general when they see what's happening, as you say, with not just the firing of Linux, but others? What's the message? Yeah, no, the, the message is clear and the message is coming from the top. Uh, don't inspect, don't investigate, don't do your job for the American people. And it's telling the civil service across the government do not speak out, no whistleblowers, 
So despite the horrendous mismanagement of, for example, the coronavirus uh, by this administration, uh, we are watching people who speak up, like Dr. Bright, getting attacked, getting fired. And that essentially says to the American people that their government can't be trusted because we don't know what's really taking place. It, there used to be bipartisan consensus. It's important to point this out uh, about inspectors general. And, and Joe Biden spoke about this the other day. Uh, maybe Chuck Grassley, maybe Mitt Romney spoke up. But they haven't really been backing these inspectors general like there used to be bipartisan support for this kind of insight. And so uh, we need Congress to investigate, but we've seen what happens when they do. And it's a very concerning development. I've only got a minute or so left, but I, I do want to ask you about something that's happening in the middle of all this uh, and a global yeah. pandemic. Uh, President Trump announcing that he's decided to withdraw from another major arms control accord, the Open Skies Treaty. Help us understand what that is and why this matters. It, it's really a gift to Vladimir Putin. The Open Skies Treaty is about ensuring that we get to see what Russia is doing in its military deployments, and they have a concurrent ability to see us. And it was done for strategic stability. By taking that away, we see less about what's happening in Russia. There's less, less confidence between our nuclear force uh, posture and theirs. And uh, to add to that, just the other day, leaked that the White House was thinking about nuclear testing as well. So uh, all of a sudden, this horrid mixture of getting away from nuclear arms treaties and talking about new nuclear testing is really setting us back. It's as if we don't have enough of on our plate with the pandemic. Now we're talking about potential nuclear arms races. And, and that's really what's coming from the White House as a result of these moves. Former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State Joel Rubin, always good to see you. Thank you so much. And coming up. My pleasure. Thanks, Chris.